And here we are for our take two. Um, couldn't invite Sandra just now. So for those, I'm not going to upload the other thing. So let's just do a proper introduction. Welcome. Good afternoon. Um, like I said in the video that I'm not going to upload, I'm sorry I didn't post any videos um, last week. That was because uh, the first week was quite busy and uh, the second part of the uh, week I was sick so I spent the entire weekend um, in bed reading um, The Sky is Everywhere by Jenny Nelson which if you follow, if you get my newsletter you know that that's a big thing for me uh, and I'm not going to spoil it uh, I'm not going to spoil well that it was a big thing for me okay so um, I'm just trying to get back to what we were doing um, we're having another heart to heart today, this time with Sandra Turnbull, and we're going to talk about going back to the drawing board, what that means. Um, and I see her now, so I should be able to invite her properly now. So let's see if it now it actually says. So there we go. I think we're going to have success. Yes, there she is. <laughs> Hello, darling. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you had it on. Okay? And yeah, you had it. You had your phone on. Do not disturb. I know. I would, thought I was doing the right thing, so I thought, oh, I'll put it on. Sorry, I'm gonna cover the camera. I'll put it on. Do not disturb. It's like, yep, yep, yep. No more bings or you know blips or whatever happens. Yeah, but that's camera. really good to know that if if somebody has that, like, there's no way I'm gonna reach through. Yeah. No. Yeah. So, well, people, you know, let's just. I don't know. Anyway, I'm here. I'm here. You're here, you're here. And it's so funny to see that you're wearing this big sweater and it's 30 degrees outside and I'm just... Well, it's, I don't know what the temperature is now, but it's, it's under 20. <laughs> Fall has started. Fall has definitely started my favourite time of the year. Oh, hi, Kristen. Hi, sweetheart. Um, Do you see, oh, you see people watching? Yeah, I can see one of my, one of my friends watching. Oh, She's okay. a darling friend of mine. Okay, well, hello. Hello. You see, this is the thing. Like, sometimes I see people watching, sometimes I don't. I tend to miss the comments. Um, so I should probably look at my uh, settings at some point. Um, hey, welcome. The funny thing is, of course, and this is something that I, um, and I'm sure we're going to talk about cycles today as well, yeah. Knowing, yeah. knowing you. And it's interesting because when I moved to Cyprus, um, somebody who's very dear to me said, um, and I think this was during a trip to the Akashic Records. Um, she said, don't forget that even though like it works differently there, you still have your own cycles. Yeah. And we were just joking about that because I was like, uh, um, so for example, Facebook is now reminding me that like years ago, I was sort of rejoicing in the fact it's finally getting cooler, so soup season is starting. So I was like sharing that again on Facebook and going like, so people, when does the soup season start in uh, in Cyprus? And somebody was like, well, November maybe. And then somebody else was like, yeah, no, no, after Christmas. Uh, and I was like, oh my God, it's going to be so interesting to see what that does. Um, yeah, maybe Because you see the season. shift, yeah. Well, you see a shift, like in the morning, yeah. uh, in the mornings, it, it's cooler. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it's darker later. Like usually the sun comes up around five in the summer. Yeah. So now it's now it's now it's slightly after six. Okay. Um, so you see a shift, but still like the temperature, like during the day, it's still quite hot. It's so it's, uh, it's interesting. Like the way that the light just falls away after equinox here in the Netherlands, like just last week was equinox. This morning I woke up, the alarm went off at seven. I'm like, wow, wow, it's really dark. I mean, it was overcast, but it was really dark. I'm like, it just happened. It surprises me. It takes me by surprise every year how quickly it changes because yeah. it's so different. Brisbane is where I grew up, where I had my, you know, till, till I was 40 years old. And the seasons there, the shift is really, really not evident. Like it, the temperature fluctuates oh, and yeah. maybe gets a bit cooler. But mainly it stays quite hot all year round. It's quite a tropical um, climate. So it must be a bit like where you are now. Yeah, it must be more similar, yeah. Yeah. And I am curious what it's gonna be, what it's gonna do, because I'm so used to having like my creative like usually the spring and the summer are really creative for me. And then, you know, in the spring and the winter I just become like this hermit. Um, 
the recluse and I don't I don't actually see well, a lot of people. Because mine's a little bit opposite on discovering to that. Oh, let's see. Okay, so let's start with the topic because I'm really curious because because you wanted to talk about this. Um, and I'm curious first and foremost, first of all, so talk a little bit about yourself and the process you find yourself in and also how long this has been going on. Okay, so um, um, I write magical realism and I write guided meditation and lots of healing kind of uh, experiential guidance. But the thing I'm talking about today is the the journey I have been, the journey that is in Afari's Earth, which is the first magical realism novel, the first book that I ever wrote. And so... Um, and the reason that I wanted to talk about this is because I haven't wanted to talk about it at all. I felt quite embarrassed and a little bit of a little bit of shame creeping in there um, because I didn't feel like it was good enough. And it's all wrapped up in that worth, that, that self-worth kind of stuff and feeling like I had to do it all by myself, which is something that I – that there's a challenge for me because – I can do so much. I feel like I should just do everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's very recognisable. And so, yeah, so it just started, like I started writing it five years ago, six years ago, five years ago. Oh, years ago now. And um, and went through the, the whole self-publishing thing. And I had, so I had, I wrote it, I revised it. I had an alpha reader. And I had a couple of beta readers, and then I revised it again, and then I published it. And um, I never really wanted to tell anybody about it. And so, so as much as I, this story is amazing, and the writing of it, like there's so much in there. I ne I never felt like it was good enough to tell anybody about. So I never advertised. I never really pushed, pushed, pushed for any to put it out anywhere. So it existed. But that was. About I mean, it. I have a, I have a copy. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, you have, you I, have, I have a physical so. copy of it. Yeah. <laughs> I know. So it was up there for sale. It's and so real. That, that edition, nobody can buy that edition anymore. So you have you have a rare a rare copy of the first edition of Afri's Earth, which is. And one day that's gonna make so much money. <laughs> I so just it's... know it. Yeah. <laughs> just hold on to it. Um, but yeah, so so, but but I realised as I as I was growing as a writer, um, as an author of novels, you know, of story, um, I've always been a writer. But as you know, getting, you know, what makes a good story, what mm -hmm. you know, how to let it out of my head, um, and the more I learned about the craft, the more I realised that most of the, that a lot of the story was still in my head. And the only reason it made sense to me is because I was filling in the gaps as I was reading. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense, yeah. And um, and so I pulled it. I just unpublished it. I didn't tell anybody, anybody. I just unpublished it because I'd sold a handful of copies, like, you know, maybe 10. And I thought, that's okay. This is not going to destroy the world if I pull this. Because I knew it needed work, and I knew I, I knew it could be a, such a a better, richer story, and more enjoyable for readers to read. Mm -hmm. And so, and so I pulled it. So you didn't tell. You first of all, you didn't tell a lot of people that you published it in the first place, and then you like snuck in and 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 just pulled it down. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I did, I did. And you know what it makes me think? Like, I remember, and like, you know me quite well. Yeah. Um, so you know that there's a lot of um, stories or how things should be done mm -hmm. going about in the, in the publishing world that uh, make my hair rise. <laughs> uh, uh, and I, I'm becoming more vocal about it. Uh, mm -hmm. I've always tried to be... Uh, like, don't want to disturb anyone uh, and don't want to make anyone angry. But um, 
one of the things that I've always heard, and I've had, I, I even had discussions with my clients, like my editing clients about this, is that at one point there was this sense that, you know, you just have to go through that process at one point, like write a book, publish it, you know, yeah. and your first book is going to be crap. Mm -hmm. So just publish it and then do something else. And it's going to be better. And I always thought like, but, but, so what happens then? For me, it felt like a lot of people were then forgetting about that first book. First of all, at the same time, you're told to write series, right? Because that's a smart thing, because people like it, like when, you, when, when they read you. Well, this is the first book uh, of a series. Yes. So these two stories, you need to write, uh, you need to write series. And the first book is going to be crap anyway, just put it up. I always thought like, so what do we all do? We write a standalone? That sucks, and then we just publish it, and then we write the series, which is going to do better. Because honestly, like I've read so many um, first novels and series by indie authors, and I'm like, I'm, I'm not touching anything you've written ever again because it's 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 not it's not developed, it's not edited, it's not proofread, and it's a tricky thing. So, and there's a lot of people out there who are now making it big, like they're making big bucks, and they don't go back and clean up those first books and I'm like imagine what would happen if you would just go back and then yeah. tell the story you now know how to tell it like yeah. now you have more skills yeah. um, you know what you're doing um, okay. so I'm actually really intrigued by the fact that you went yeah. against all of that mm -hmm. and just said I'm not I'm not playing that game no no I'm not and for all of those reasons because it is the first book in a series. And the story, is, and the reason that I chose to write this series in the first place is because the series that I really want to write, I'm not able to write yet. I don't have the skills as, as a storyteller, as an author, mm -hmm. to write the, the caliber of story that that tale requires. And so my way around it was to write another series that's not so full on, that's not full fantasy, even. Um, even though the other one's probably not going to be full fantasy. I'm, I seem to be stuck in magical realism, which I'm perfectly happy with. But this series... That's a was like, perfectly fine genre. <laughs> like I, mean, in, I love the genre. So. You know, with this, with this, um, in that world, so write another series in that world so I can get to know more of that world and understand more of it for myself. So this series of books was intended to do that. And, but it's a brilliant series by itself. The story, I think, is a worthy one to be read, to be told and to be read. There's a lot in it. There's a lot of um, really deep personal work that I think people can get out of it. And, I mean, that's the whole point of why I write. But, so that was the reason I wrote this series. I started this series in the first place. That was the point of it. But now I realise that it's much more than just a means to getting to this other thing. It is mm -hmm. its own creation and deserves um, it deserves to be treated, you know, the way that I would treat any 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 worthy creation because it is such. Yeah, yeah. So it, it needs the it needs to be treated with the the respect that it deserves. Yeah, and that yeah. that's something that I I miss a lot, uh, in, in the stories that I read sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so uh, I'm, lucky, yeah. Yeah, I'm lucky enough, because I'm an indie publisher, to be able to do that. I can pull it and go, no, not good enough. Let's start it. Let's start again. Yeah, and you did learn from the process. Absolutely. Well, I've published um, three other books, so an experiential guide, a workbook for that experiential guide, and a journal since then. So, um, so I've published four books and published one. Yeah, so it's not as if you went completely uh, out no. of the. <laughs> no, no, you're no. Still so there. it's not like I'm, I'm not just sort of dicking around, you know, you know, mucking about. This is this is a real process, and it's been really hard. Like it was really hard the first time I said out loud, "Oh no, I've unpublished that," you know, because family or friends or whatever. So how's your? Oh, that that that's always a question, isn't it? Like, oh, how how how's the how are the book? How's the book going? You're like, what? how the hell do you answer that question? I still haven't found a gracious way or to, to answer it that sounds like I'm. It's like not completely nothing. 
if anyone's got an answer, I would really like to know that answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, but it is, but it is the uh, um, how do I say that? Like, if you're if you're if you're in that, like you said, like the, the first time I said it out loud. Yes. Yeah. So okay. So so okay. Yeah. to go back to go back to the start. What made you hit publish in the first place on this first edition? This soon to be worth a million euros edition that I have a copy of. Because I what made to, you? Um, oh, this is hard. Okay, because it, this is really difficult to phrase. I hit publish because. I wanted someone else to tell me it was good enough and the only way that I have learned in my adult life that something is good enough is if it's worth money and people are paying for it. So yes. that's the validation thing. So that's the validation thing and where I've come to over the past five years since getting published is that my validation is what I require and that book does not have that. So it doesn't actually matter whether people give it two stars or five stars. No, it does not. If you don't like it. No, I am not. I, I, and I realised that I didn't have, that what was bothering me about that book when I published my second book, a book that I was inc I'm incredibly proud of and is a brilliant piece of work, and is that embodying earth? Yes. Yes. And the feeling I had when that went live was nothing like the feeling that I had for after research. And I went, no, that's the feeling I want. The feeling that I don't care if nobody else buys it. I know that that is the best that I can do and it's beautiful and it's brilliant. And whoever actually comes across it will find value in it. And I mean, as the editor of said book, uh, I completely agree with you. Um, I do. Um, so that was for you. That was the. Was that the moment that you decided I need to unpublish this? Yes, it was. Oh, and was that a conscious? Mo was that conscious, or was that when it started to sort of like try to get it, like the idea, try to get it, or was it like immediately like? Yeah. No, I, it was. It was like a revelation. Ah, this is it. This is the goal for me. This is what says to me, that's a good book and you need to push, you know, this is, this is, this is the goal for me. And I went and unpublished straight away. It was just, just like that. It wasn't, a, it was one of those decisions that makes itself. Yeah, yeah. So before you knew it, you were just on KDP. Uh, yeah, I went it. straight in. And just like, that's intense that you didn't sleep on it. You didn't talk to anybody about it. You were just like. I know what I need to do now because, yeah. and it's funny that that happens when you do publish something you're proud of. Yeah. And, and yet, I didn't tell anybody that I unpublished. Hmm. No, you're sad. So why didn't you tell anybody you, you, you didn't unpublish? Why did, mixing it all up. Why didn't you tell anybody you unpublished it? Because. Feels like it would. It felt like admitting failure. At mm -hmm. that time, like, like, um, yeah, it was. It, it it was a process to work through. Like, it wasn't just. It, like, it was a revelation. Okay, this is not good enough. It needs to come back. But then, how do I explain to people who care about me and know nothing about publishing that I've taken this, what would look like a backward step? because I failed at something, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, there's, I don't want to have to explain that because it's such a deep internal process that it's going to take me three days and four bottles of wine to explain to you what the hell's going on inside. <laughs> Lots of chocolate. <laughs> yes. Lots of vegan cheese. So, and it, so it really did go back to the uh, other people's opinion thing. 
the other people may be not understanding. And so don't give them a chance to not understand or to understand, just don't say anything. Yeah, just go mum. So so how did you feel when you, when you I don't even know how to, to unpublish a book, um, but I'm sure when the, if I ever get to that moment, I'll find out really quickly how to do that. So how did it feel when you hit that button? There was space. There was space, but I did turn away from it for a while because I had that same feeling of shame, like I haven't done what you require of me. And I was, mm -hmm. you know, as though the story was a was its own entity, and they all are. Mm -hmm. You know, I yeah. haven't I haven't treated you well. And I felt a little bit ashamed about that. And so I did turn away from her for a while. And I can't, I'm trying to remember the point at which I began revising. Like I, t I unpublished it and put it into a state of, oh, this is being revised. But I didn't actually start revising for quite a long time. Um, it was in that. So how long? How how long do you think? Because that, that it, it kind of makes it almost makes me think that the story that you put out there was just another draft. Yeah, it was just another. And then draft. when you, and when you unpublished it, it's like what Stephen King says, like put it in a drawer for six weeks. So yeah. was it six weeks or was it longer? It was about six months. Six months, and you probably needed that time to yeah. process through all the other. So uh, I say to people now, feel anyone I'm talking to about writing. You know, it, take your time, put it away, come back to it. And I know that yeah. they're not going to listen because I didn't listen because I knew no, that. It's, very, it's a very unpopular opinion, it's very especially unpopular. in the indie publishing world, because it all has yeah. to be, yeah. if somebody publishes 60 books in a year, we have to applaud them. And all I can think every time is, should should I try to read that? Like... Yeah, but you know what? The thing that the, the the place that I'm coming to in my head, as I am taking out of all of that, the stuff that works for me, which is how I work, I absorb something like soak it all up as much as I can, and then I pick the pieces that work for me, and let the rest go, and I make all of those things that work for yeah. me part of my process. And yeah. the thing that I am understanding about this is you can combine taking your time with something and having multiple releases in a year by consistently doing your work and then putting it away when it needs to be put away. And if you have a number of manuscripts waiting for you to go back to them at different stages, then you can achieve those multiple releases because you're consistently yeah. working you're just not working in the same story yeah exactly yeah but that, that's how i'm functioning as well like i have uh that i counted the other day about 14 projects mm. <laughs> that's cool uh, i thought it was 13 but the one was added recently yeah. so this is the for me that's like um you do one thing so right now I'm I'm having a, a I'm I'm working on a journal it's in it's in uh, it's in beta, and I got two beta reads back this morning and I'm like oh so I have to re to rethink something, mm -hmm. um, but in the meantime I also know that I have to start um, putting up a Scrivener file um, for the next uh, romance book that I'm co-writing. Hang on, you so it's the video went funny. What are you putting up? What I'm putting up. You've, oh, so I'm, I'm working on a journal. Are you hearing me? I can yeah. hear you. Are you here? Yeah, I'm here. The video is just okay. a bit funny before. Oh. Um, so so what, did, what did you miss? That I was working on a, on a journal so planner kind of thing. You're working on your journal and then you're doing something with your co-writer as well? Oh yeah, yeah. So I also, I, it's time to. Um, we were plotting while we were in Scotland this summer, and it's time for me to put like the written plot that I have in my notebook into a Scrivener file so that she can start the first draft. Right. So that's something like as soon as this 
as soon as this comes back entirely, um, that needs to be on like on the back of my mind for a little bit uh, yeah. because I have to make some tweaks. Uh, and then in the meantime, I can have the out the 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 time slot that I have for each day for writing. I'm just mm -hmm. devoted to something else. Yeah. yeah. And there is a there, there's a way that I am working out how to do the you know all of the things together so that they are I all the same. Things. Like it's yeah. It's not a smooth process there's yet. All, they're for all me. the best. Sorry, yeah. I keep cutting out. Can you hear me? Yes. There's no problem on my side. Like I I see you. Hello. Uh -oh. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Okay, are you here? fine. So so because they they're okay, good. So your video's frozen, but I'll just keep talking. You tell me to shut up when you want me to. Um, can you still hear me then? I I have different uh size projects. So there's the magical real Sorry? I'm you. Yes, I'm you. So I have the novel, okay. which is I'm almost finished revising. And then I'm plotting um, a novella, the first of a series of novellas. And then I write even smaller um, scripts for guided meditation, um, which, which are just like very short stories. It's a journey. And so um, there's a there's a the buzz like that 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 sense of achievement that you get from putting push and publish, I get um, by being able to publish smaller projects in between this larger one that's going on in the background all the time. Yeah, am I back for you? Can you hear me again? Can you see me move? Yes, I can. Okay. This has never happened before. It happened the other way around. No, you cut out. Okay, there you are. You... <laughs> so I don't you know what's happening. That I, just said? I did. I just hope the video cut it as well. <laughs> Finger crossed. I heard everything you just said. Me can too, you still hear me? You keep cutting out and I can't hear you. Okay, that's okay. bad. Like I'm, I'm, I'm quite used now. to the other person. Okay, I'm quite used to the other person being like warped and, and everything, but not the other way around. So now I'm curious what that is. Oh, the Wi-Fi. Oh, the Wi-Fi. Yeah, no, no, so I'll, I'll be back on. Question. I'll answer it. How about that? Okay. I, I, am I back on? I think so. Okay. So. Let me just ask you a question, and you, know, you can just talk. Um, oh, Sheena is just responding that they can see both of us. Okay, we just lose each other. I'm going to ask you a question. So how do you know, how do you know that no, it is garbled. time? I'm sorry, baby. I can't hear you. It's, I don't know what's happening. Do you see the comments? Oh, I know. It's time to... Do you see the comments? No, I'm sorry. You keep, you keep okay. cutting. That's, and then you come um, back, and then it's right for a little second, and then you go away again. It's weird, because I see us both perfectly, and Sheena also says she, she can see us both perfectly clear. So should we give up? See, I just Do you want to give up? It, but now you've frozen again. Oh, I, I can see him. I never want to give up. Okay, let's go again. I can see you. It's happening. Now you okay. move. Now you froze. Now you're moving. Quick question then. When? Yeah, it appears that the universe does not want you to ask, ask that question of me, or at least it doesn't want me to answer, because uh, it keeps cutting out when you ask the question. Okay, I'll, 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 focus, I'll focus on something else. We can make this... Okay. Can I focus on something else, see if that works? Okay. 
Yes. Should we make this part one and try another stream? This is a part two already. <laughs> but yes, let's do that. Let's do that. I'm going to finish it now and then I'll come back oh. online. Yes? All right, babe. Okay. See you in a second. Make sure you do.